Hello, everyone. Um, I've been at the AHS, uh, I think, three times before, uh, mostly presenting my work on coconuts in the coast of Ecuador with Afro-Ecuadorian communities. And I'm thrilled to be here uh, with my colleague, Gustavo, who is the director of this documentary that you're going to watch today. We are representing the Seed Savers Network of Ecuador. We are part of the Seed Savers, uh, who are a group of farmers that uh, grow food agroecologically uh, throughout the country. And um, you, you get to try uh, the chocolate that uh, one of the, the, the seed savers of our network make. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, but I'm, I'm a cultural anthropologist, so I'm, um, I wanted to ask how many of you don't include uh, corn in your diet? So you, you're following a diet that, OK. So a lot of, of you. So this is what made me think twice before presenting this film to this group, because I know how critical uh, you all are with, with grains. Um, but I decided it was important because it's a film about ancestral health. The, the ancestral health and the ancestral food traditions of Ecuadorian indigenous uh, communities that are alive until today. And you will understand what I'm saying when you watch the film. Uh, these are uh, people that will probably die if they decide not to eat corn. So this is the, the reason why I, I'm presenting this film, and I hope you enjoy it. And we will be available for questions afterwards. And I say a few more things about um, our work there as well. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. It's 34 minutes long. Toda semilla encierra el misterio de la vida. Posee miles de formas gracias a millones de años de evolución natural. Quienes cuidamos de estas, aportamos a su desarrollo, recogiendo, guardando e intercambiando las mejores, mostrando a cada paso, respeto, cuidado y pasión en una relación activa con la madre naturaleza. En Ecuador, los guardianes de semillas somos una gran familia que siembra alimentos ecológicos en todo el territorio nacional. Cuidamos la salud de la tierra y del agua a través de las leyes de la permacultura y las enseñanzas ancestrales de nuestros pueblos para mantener así la armonía del milagro del cual todos somos parte. Tarpuna So you guys can ask us questions, but in the meantime, I wanted to um, also let you know that, um, so, uh, like I said, we are part of the Seed Savers Network. The, the people that you saw on this film are also part of the Seed Savers. They, they are Seed Savers, as you could see. They, they save their seeds, their ancestral seeds, um, according to the tradition uh, of their community, which they back to centuries. Um, and uh, so Gustavo and I are, uh, well, we're happy to tell you more about the Seed Savers Network and what we do. But we also wanted to let you know that we are uh, offering two opportunities uh, to, to visit Ecuador and experience food and nature and culture there. Um, the first one is uh, a, well, a, a road trip, uh, and it's, I'm, I'm running that program, and I'm taking people uh, through various regions in Ecuador, experience regional cuisine and the culture that surrounds it. As you can see, our work uh, puts a lot of emphasis on the history and the culture that surrounds food, um, which is equally important for us in relation to health uh, compared to the food itself. Um, so I'm ha happy to answer questions about that. I have some flyers also that I, I have here in case you're interested. And Gustavo, he, um, he runs a program called Voices of the Forest, which is another opportunity to immerse yourself in specifically in the Amazon region to hear the voices of the forest and make art. 
Uh, it's a program um, designed for people that want to spark their creativity and um, make our art and in, in this opportunity to connect to nature. So we're happy to answer questions and I also let my, my colleague Gustavo say hi. Hello, do, do you hear me? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah, so uh, we're happy to answer questions um, or comments. Is this, is this on? Um, so we talked to you a little bit beforehand, but I feel like everybody should hear it. What do you think of the corn in the United States? Uh, well, personally, I, I don't eat corn here. It it's, doesn't taste good to me. I, I'm used to this, um, this corn from, from my country. I, I'm, you know, I'm from the highlands, so there's a, a, even though I grew up in the city, um, people continue to make recipes with all the different varieties of corn. And uh, for me, that's the tasty kind of corn. Uh, the, the US type corn is just one kind, and it's very sweet, and it's, it not, it's not tasty to me. So that's, that's what I think, <laughs> personally. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed this film. Uh, this was um, just beautiful to watch. And I, so I wonder, like, what are some of the forces that are causing people to uh, move away from the countryside, and what is bringing them back now? I mean, you said that they were working on, um, you know, continuing the culture and and getting the kids involved and, and so on. Yes, sure. Uh, well, I mean, this is a process that started around the 70s. Uh, like, you know, uh, the countryside becoming urbanized. So um, up until the 70s, most of the country was rural. And right now, most of it is urban. Uh, so I think, like, the city invaded uh, a lot of the rural areas. And it influenced, with its culture, uh, the communities. So. I mean, it's, I think that's part of the reason. And, and then, uh, well, in this case, a lot of the people in the network are, you know, belong to peasant indigenous communities, um, but other people are people that grew up, grew up in the city and that, you know, they just decided to um, start growing food in an ecological way, um, according to the traditions. So, um, uh, this is part of the movement that that you know we are part of. Mm -hmm. I thought the the movie was really beautiful, and the representation of the knowledge of the indigenous communities really comes to life. So bravo to you both for that. One of the practices that you displayed in the movie is something um, that I understand is called I may mispronounce it nishtamalization. The mixing of corn with ash, which, um, according to uh, some good friends of the Price Pottinger Nutrition Foundation and Bill Schindler, who I interviewed in our last journal, really releases the nutrients for our absorption. And I think that we all know that corn is the most grown crop in the world. And what I worry is about is that because in the United States, at least, the interests of profit and processing time often takes precedence over the proper preparation of foods, mm -hmm. that this nishtamalization process has been lost on us. And we know that so many societies around the world are dependent upon corn. And I'm curious about your thoughts on how you can feature that process as a means of bringing the nutrient value of corn back to the world. Can I, I can I'm going to let my, my colleague talk. Um, Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the in the in the seed guardian network, we think about seeds like uh, having uh, fifty percent of the information within, like genetic and 50% having information around it, like cultural. And those both halves complete a whole seed. Um, so the cultural part is essential 
for the seed to have um, its purpose in existence in a relationship with other species that eats it, that it builds with it, that lives with it. So uh, this kind of process like nixtamalization um, really reminds me about the importance of getting back to other kind of organization like in a social level. Because if you think about it, uh, industrialization begins um, to lose everything about the culture, you know, and normalizing uh, things like fertilizants, like um, um, like petroleum uh, derivatives to to grow, like um, that are that are can can that are not good for human consumption. No, mm -hmm. instead, this example that we see in the film, this corn that this woman uh, saw, it's organic, it's really made out of love. It's like, you see these people like getting getting together, having a little thing to drink. It's, it's more cultural and made for a little community. You, do you remember in the movie, they say like, our corn is just for the people around us, for our family, for our friends. So in this case, you are sure that that corn is organic, that it has no pesticides, you know, so, um, and you have that other process as well, that you don't need any, any, anything more than just the ashes of the fire that you have cooked something with, and you use that and you have this ready to eat and you can uh, save it like for months if you dry it correctly. So uh, this process reminds me that to go to the simple, to go to the, to the little community and to save around the seed, like all the information, all the cultural information that goes with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm... Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to um, what type of research, if any research has been done into the nutrient content of corn grown in these milpa uh, type agroecological systems that have really uh, rich and diverse polycultures with uh, healthier soils. Do you know, Gustavo, if, if there's any research done? Have you, have you done any nutrient content analysis comparing it to, you know, I mean, corn grown more in a conventional monocrop systems as a, as a, yes. as a benchmark? I, I, don't, I don't have references in hand, but, but um, I know that in the, in the Alpa Tarpuna website, that it's the Guardian of the Seeds website, you can, you can uh, maybe you can get something in there. Okay. Yeah, the, the Seed Savers Network uh, have a publication uh, which is called ALPA, and you can access it on uh, redsemillas.org, uh, R-E-D, semillas, S-E-M-I-L-L-A-S. -L -L that or org and and they um, they have access to their publication there and um, our colleague Javier and other people uh, write uh, you, you know, they conduct research and they write about it in in this publication um, I believe in terms of like the the analysis in the lab uh, unfortunately in Ecuador there's not a lot of research conducted about food uh, which is unfortunate but at the same time, uh, I think there's a lot of interest uh, to find out, again, what is the culture that is preserving the, the traditional ways of, um, of handling the corn, which have proven to, to, you know, to preserve the nutrients and to take out the, the nutrients that we don't need, like in the case you saw with uh, uh, sprouting the corn. That's, a, that's I mean, it's, it's an ancient 
technique that it's been proven in studies outside of Ecuador that um, it's necessary for us to be able to assimilate correctly uh, some of the nutrients. So, mm -hmm. well, what, what's kind of interesting here in in, in the U.S. and in um, some other places is that there's been a we have what's called a regenerative agricultural movement, which is actually re. Um, some of it's new, but some of it's rediscovering a lot of the the indigenous techniques that mm -hmm. countries like you know Guatemala and and El and uh, you know and First Nations people have used, including you know integrated systems, multi crops, where you have mm -hmm. healthy root systems where plants exchange nutrients, and the new and the what they're finding with some of the research up here is that the the plants grown in these systems have much higher levels of manganese and Mm -hmm. um, magnesium and so it's quite different nu nutrient profile than what you get with uh, plants you know grown in conventional or even tilled organic systems where there isn't as uh, healthy soil systems. Yeah, and I, I'm just gonna add one more thing that I think uh, my, our contribution here is, is to really emphasize on what's like the ways of eating beyond what's in the food like you know, the, the chemical or the nutrient composition of the food itself, because as we heard this morning, you cannot, like really, this film shows that you cannot separate the food from the way it's eaten. And so this also goes into the health outcome. Uh, so it's not just important to look at the, you know, the composition of the corn, but how it is eaten. So how many of us celebrate around a crop that grows in the region that we live uh, cyclically every every year at the same time of year the whole community comes together to celebrate that crop i think that says a lot about health which we are not discussing enough um, and which is why uh, we we brought this film to this conference and thank you tess and everybody that that um that welcomed uh, our work here so thank you We still have lots of chocolate available. It's also uh, made by, by our colleagues in, um, you know, in the, in the, in the network. And um, I'm happy to, to tell you about it. Uh, I have it outside. And yeah, I'm happy to answer questions. Also, this, this film will be available on streaming. Um, so if you want to stay in touch, you can, you can follow us on Instagram. And also happy to, I, it was on the website, I, if you can show the slide, uh, uh, you can find it, uh, all the information on our website. And thank you so much. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you. Thank you so much.